Hello, my little yarnivores and spiderettes. Fiber Spider back again with another tutorial just for you. And today I'm going to show you how to crochet this really beautiful, lovely, elegant, oh so lacy and oh so simple kimono style shawl. Absolutely love this piece and I hope you will too. Basically, my mom was given something very similar to this for Christmas and it was made in a fleece-like material and what I fell in love with was the shape of it. Now, if you think back to the days of when the Snuggie was so, so popular because it was the blanket with sleeves and you're thinking to, myself, to yourself, why couldn't you just put on a robe backwards, right? Well, this is sort of like a wearable blanket and I will show you what I mean in a bit. It's so easy, absolutely love it. Now, for those of you that have been following my channel for any length of time, know how much I love the granny stitch because of its simplicity, it's easy to work up, and it lends itself to what I call mindful stitching. It's a way for you to dive right into the project without having to agonize over the pattern. And I'm going to show you through this tutorial how to create something using either the granny stitch or you can use really whatever stitch you want and that's the beauty of this design um, for the sake of simplicity i'm going to show you it done in the granny stitch however if you want to go into a different direction with it go right ahead you know the world is your oyster crack it open see what you can do you know that's the beauty of this absolutely love it <laughs> and uh, so i'm going to show you the basic rundown of the design and so i want you to grab your pen and paper or pencil and paper or what have you and take some notes and we are going to go over the basic construction in, as far as dimension size and so forth and then i'm going to show you how to actually make this all right so without further ado let's get started all righty so as you can see when this piece is laid out it looks basically like a blanket but with a slit down the center and that is what creates those two flaps now the beauty of this design is that there's no seaming and no sewing involved which is absolutely a godsend for us don't you think <laughs> so now let me just sit down here now basically what you're going to need to do is for this width which is approximately uh, let me see here about 44 inches in width you are going to need to chain approximately 130 chains now you can make this piece however wide you want it to be by all means and all you need to do for the base chain is it needs to be in increments of three plus one okay so with that being said this creates a total of let me see here a total of 43 clusters in width from side to side 43 clusters and then i repeated this whole process for a total of 60 rows going from the very base to this row up here. It's a total of 60 rows. Then from here, continued on with just half. I'm crawling across this right now. <laughs> then I continued on with this flap. Again, no seaming. You just keep going right up. And that's the beauty of this. Uh, after we do the 60 rows down here, we continued going up here for the first flap for a total of another 59 more rows, okay? Then we go over to the second flap for 59 rows, and then, my dears, I did a single crochet edge around the entire thing so as to prevent it from stretching too much because of the weight. Now, keep in mind that this takes a lot of yarn because in essence, this is a blanket. <laughs> you know, it's basically like a wearable blanket, which I absolutely love on these cold winter days. Now, this entire piece 
took two skeins of Pound of Love, and I only had a tiny little bit left over. So, with that being said, you are going to use a lot of yarn. <laughs> you can, of course, use whatever kind of yarn you want, and just be sure that the yarn is of the same weight. Now, the reason why I used Pound of Love is because it is a light weight, and you get a lot of mileage with the skeins that you do buy. So I would suggest a lightweight yarn because there's a lot of material here. If you want something heavier, by all means, you could use, say, Red Heart Super Saver, you know, whatever works for you. So without further ado, let's get into the pattern. All right. Alrighty, my dears. By the way, uh, just so you know, when I said before that I used up the majority of two skeins of Pound of Love, this, this little ball, was all that was left out of those two pounds. Yes, indeed. I do not lie. <laughs> and for this example, I'm going to be using some more Pound of Love, this time in the gray. And as always, no, I am not sponsored, but I do like to show you what it is that I'm using so that you can duplicate the results if you wish to do so. Also, I am using a size H crochet hook. Now, as far as the weight of the yarn. Well, you don't want it to be too heavy, but like I said, you can use whatever yarn you wish. And as far as the hook size, you can use whatever hook size goes with the yarn. However, um, in spite of the fact that I am giving you, you know, a basic pattern, you know, this is a pattern that you can play with. It's more of a, a formula, and therefore you don't have to be too exact. All right, so like I said, we are going to be doing a stitch count of increments of three. So after doing the slip knot, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one. And so that's an increment of three, but you need to add one more for the clusters to work. Now, obviously, this is only 22 chains. Now, pretend, you know, let, let's play pretend. <laughs> um, pretend that this is actually 130 chains, okay? I'm just doing a practice watch because to do the entire piece in front of my camera as it is, very, very cumbersome. So let's play pretend and pretend that this is in fact 130 chains. Now you can go more or less just as long as it's a interval of three stitches plus one additional stitch. Okay, so then in the fourth chain from the hook, we're going to do two double crochets. This first three is going to count as our first double. And so we're going to go into that fourth chain from the hook and do two more double crochets. And then chain one. And then down here on the chain, we're going to skip two chains and go into the third with another cluster of three double crochets. And that is what we're going to do for the length of the chain. Now, of course, if you are going to be doing this project from the get-go, this is going to take you a bit of time. That's okay, you can pause. So between each cluster of three double crochets, you chain one, you skip two chains, you go into the third chain with three doubles, and then you chain one, and you skip two chains, so on and so forth. So we've got three clusters, chain one, skip two chains, go into the third with another cluster of three double crochets. Chain one, 
skip two chains, go into the third with another cluster of three doubles. And also, like I said, you can ultimately use whatever stitch you like. You could do the entire thing strictly in double crochets. That's perfectly fine. In fact, in the rather bitter cold, it might behoove you to do just doubles because then it won't have all these holes. However, I think it looks nice. All right, so I chained one, skip two of those chains, go into the third for another cluster. And there are a number of really simple stitches that, of course, can be used to produce this because basically it is a large rectangle with two rectangles coming off of it, you know. Um, you know, it's not exactly rocket science, but it might take a bit of figuring. So then after chaining one and skipping two chains in the last chain, do three more doubles. And of course it might take a little bit of trial and error, but that's part of the inherent burden of thinking outside of the box. It took me a while, believe you me, to get the dimensions just right to my liking. And as I said before, the the base of the piece, the width of the piece is, I believe I said, <clears throat> about 44 inches uh, in width. And it is about, I think it was about 66 inches in length from bottom to top. I think it was about 66, if I'm not mistaken. So pretend that this is your base and that this was a total of 43 clusters. Okay. Again, like I said, we're playing pretend here. All right. So we're going to go on to the next row. Alrighty. I did double check and yes, the initial width of your bottom chain would be approximately 44 inches uh, as far as the width of the piece. And as you keep progressing up, it would be approximately 66 inches in the total length, the height of the piece. And yes, it would be a total of 43 clusters for this base. Okay, obviously not for this practice swatch, but I'm trying to give you a general idea. Okay, so let me just shift my camera just a little and we will continue on with the second row. So what we're going to need to do is we're going to need to chain up four. One, two, three, and four. Turn the work. And then into this chain one space, we're going to do another cluster of three doubles. Chain one cluster into the next chain one space with three doubles, and so on and so forth until we reach the end of row two. And basically what you're going to be doing for approximately a total of 60 rows is repeat these two rows, A and B. Now, you could have however many rows that you want. I would only say that I would suggest to do an even number. And that will become clear as we go on. And I know this is not quite the typical form of tutorial because it's, like I said, it's more of a... Uh, a formula, but a little bit of technique and a little bit of formula can go a long way. So we've reached the end of the row, so we need to chain one and into this first double crochet, we're going to do another double crochet. Now, yes, it can be a little bit tricky, but with a bit of patience and perseverance, you can do it. You see? Just like that. All right. 
And so now we have these open loops at the top of the second row. And these loops are important because that will enable us to do the change over from the base block to creating the, the flaps at the top that much easier, I find. All right, so what you're going to need to do is we're going to need to continue with these two rows for a total of 60 in total thereabouts. All right, so I'm going to do a few more repeats to show you because I want to make sure that it's abundantly clear. And then I will show you how to continue on with the flaps. All right. All right, so we're going to continue on by doing a third row. So we're going to chain up three, turn the work, and into this space, we will do two more double crochets because the chaining of three counts as a double. Okay, chain one, go to the next chain one space, and do three more doubles, and we'll continue to do the exact same thing all the way across to the opposite side. Three doubles, chain one, three doubles, chain one. In essence, it is the straight granny stitch. Instead of doing rounds, we are doing rows. Now, of course, if you are so inclined, you could do granny squares for this project. That would be absolutely lovely. Uh, you could do big ones and small ones and interconnect them. You know, you could really do whatever sort of shapes, even, ooh, you could do uh, granny hexagons or granny triangles and interconnect those. This would be a lovely, lovely piece with different kinds of motifs all joined together. All right, and we're almost to the end. And so in this space here, we're going to finish off by doing three double crochets. And that is the end of the third row. You see? Okay, so we'll do another one together, chaining it up of four because we need to go up and over. So one, two, three, four, turn the work, and then into that chain one space, three doubles. Gotta put a bit of more yarn. All right, so I've got my, my chain space here, three doubles, chain one, three doubles into the next chain one space, and so on and so forth. And this will make a total of four rows. And like I said, for the sake of ease, I would say do an even number of rows. You know, I did 60. You could do however many you like. Basically, this main piece creates the back. Now, you might want to have it short in the back. You might want to have it longer. It's totally up to you. You can customize this however you wish. I'm just giving you basically the blueprints for creating your own greatness. So after chaining one, we need to do a double crochet into that first double crochet right here. There you go. All right. And that is the end of the fourth row. 
Now you can see we have our loops at the top corners and we have our solid ones at the bottom corners. Okay, and now what I'm going to show you is how to go about creating the two flaps. All right, I'll be right back. All right, so we ended on an even number row. In this case, it's number four. You would want to end on row 60. And so then to continue on in a seamless fashion, what we're going to do is we're going to chain up three, turn the work, and we're going to continue on just as we have been, but we're not going to go all the way across. So I did my total of three double crochets because we got our chain and two doubles in that chain space. Chain one, go into the next with another cluster. Chain one and into the next with a cluster. Now we're not going to go across to the other side. We're going to stop short because as you can see, we did a total of three clusters. Now one, two, and three. That would be the third cluster on this side. So we've got two clusters that we're going to not cross over, all right? Because it's all about symmetry in this particular case. So we did three clusters on this side, and we want three on this side. So we're gonna leave these two untouched, and we're gonna continue on with just this side. Now, when you have your entire width of a total of 43 clusters, what you would do in this instance, instead of three clusters, as I have done for this example, you would do a total of 20 clusters. And the number of unworked clusters in the middle would be actually a total of four uh, clusters that would be free because you would have from this point over, you would have 20 clusters. And from this point over to this side, you would have 20 clusters. And then you would have four in the middle that would be unworked, and that creates the neck opening. So to continue on with this flap, you would do just as we have been, which would be chaining up four, because we need to go up and over, and then going into that first chain one space <clears throat> with three double crochets, chain one, into the next chain one space, three doubles, chain one, and into that last double crochet, do a double crochet. Ta-da! All right, and then you would continue on by chaining up three, turn the work, and do two double crochets into this first space here. Chain one, three doubles into the next chain one space. chain one, and into this last space, three doubles. All right. Now, the reason why I say that on the initial large rectangle at the bottom to do an even number, say, as I've said, you know, 60 rows, um, it is much easier to go into these corner spaces to continue going up. Now, the reason why I said to do a total of 59 rows, an odd number on the flaps, is because that way you end with a solid set of corners at the top 
to correspond with the solid corners at the bottom. Now, this could be construed as a moot point. However, I always say the devil is in the details, and this is just, you know, me and my overactive mind working, you know, on overtime. So, um, that's why I said 60 for the base, 59 rows for the flap. Okay, so now to do the second flap, I'll show you that. All right. All right, now, what you could quite conceivably do is start with your work on this side and connect your yarn and chain up. However, if you did that, see how these first three are facing towards us? This is the right side. If you did that, they would be facing the opposite way. And to me, again, that's my overactive mind. So to counteract that, you would start actually on this side. Now, as I said, you're gonna skip those center two. In your case, if you did the full width, like I said, you would skip four of these clusters. So instead of two, pretend that it's four of these, okay? And so you'd go into that space and you would pull up your yarn. And yes, this is obviously a different color yarn, but it's what I happen to have on hand. And so after pulling the yarn up, you would chain up three and you would do two more double crochets within that same space. If I can get my act together here. There we go. Chain one into the next chain one space, three doubles. Chain one and into the last space, three doubles. And then you would chain up four, turn the work and you would continue on. Now, like I said, this is such an easy pattern. Once you understand the logistics involved, you know, see now we've got that loop space just like we had down in here, and you would chain one and you would continue right along, and it's really as easy as that. And uh, once you get into the, the groove of the pattern, really that easy. Now, as you can see, you know, as I would continue on, there would be this next space, you know, and uh, I, I felt that having four, instead of just two here, four spaces, that was perfectly adequate. Um, you know, and this is something that you can play around with, and that's the beauty of it. Uh, the granny stitch is sort of like the tinker toys of crochet, the you know, the DNA of crochet, <laughs> and you can really play around with it, and that's how I created this. And I really hope that um, I wasn't too uh, long-winded with this, but I really wanted to be very clear as to how I constructed it, and, uh, you know, hopefully it made sense, because this is a great project, and I'm so happy that I could share it with all of you. And if you like this tutorial, and if you found it helpful, please hit the little like button down below. Your support means always so much to me. I always appreciate, you know, all of your comments and things, and I would love to hear from you. If you have any questions or comments, suggestions, what have you, please do so in the comments section down below. And uh, if you haven't hit subscribe already, please do so as well, because I do try to post videos as often as I can, whether it be knitting, crocheting, or audiobook narration. So listen, my dears, until next time, I want all of you to stay inspired, stay caffeinated, and above all, stay stitching. I love you guys, and I will see you in my next video. Bye for now.